The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Good morning, good morning. Good morning on the West Coast. Good afternoon on the East Coast. Um, episode 3, another Chappelle show is in progress. Um, pretty good weekend so far. Shout out to Budweiser and Rock Nation for putting on Made America weekend. That was kind of special. Um, before we get started in today's episode, just want to shout out Joe Brand shaking my hand. Um, he don't know who hand he was shaking, you know, one of the greatest sports executive of the 21st century, but he'll later know. He'll later, you know, he'll know later on and everything. Uh, um, today's episode, we're gonna uh, we're gonna speak on Aaron Rodgers. We're gonna speak on the New York Giants, and then we're gonna speak on the top five shooting guards ever, but particularly Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant. Um, I had a discussion maybe Thursday with some older guys from the neighborhood that you know got me into this whole sports thing and debate and inspiring thing and. It was an intriguing conversation, so I'm going to bring it to the people and see what you guys think. First, in our honor of football starting next week, we're going to start with uh, Aaron Rodgers. And for most people, he's probably the best quarterback in the league. Not to me. I'll give that to Brady first. Um, but I don't even got him as two. Now, everybody's going to say that's blasphemous. He's two. I mean, it's, it's a lot of people you can put around too. I, I put Breeze around there. I put I put a lot of people around there, but they'll say how. Listen, this is my issue with Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers is slightly overrated. I know a lot of people are going crazy right now when they hear that part. I'm like, what? How is he overrated? But he's slightly overrated to me. Here's why we lower the standards of greatness for him so that he can be greater than what he actually is. What do I mean when I say that? Aaron Rodgers has been in the league 12 years, played about nine of them. He sat the first three behind um, Brett Favre. Learned a lot, you know, got to know players, yada, yada, got to know the offense, whatever may have you. Aaron Rodgers has a 9-7, and seven, maybe 10-7 and seven playoff record at best. That's not, like, overly impressive. He has one Super Bowl two years removed from the Brett Favre team. To me, Brett Favre built that team. He had a lot of the same wide receivers, um, linemen, a couple people on defense. Um, I want to say Jordy. Matter of fact, I don't even want to say I'm sure Jordy Nelson was uh, on the squad. He just wasn't playing as much, but he was on the squad. Aaron got to get to know him, everything. Since that 2010 Super Bowl run with what I feel are Brett Favre soldiers, that team is a lot of Brett Favre soldiers, a lot of people Brett Favre molded, helped in their development, built relationship with whatever may have you. He hasn't won yet. He hasn't been to a Super Bowl. And... He hasn't faced that stiff of competition, or he hasn't faced any competition that anybody else in the NFC ha- didn't have to go through. But he hasn't been to a Super Bowl. Now, some some people are going to say, what does that mean? It means a lot. Tom Brady been to the Super Bowl a couple times since, two th- since he started playing. Peyton Manning's even been, since 2010, I want to say Peyton Manning's been two more times since 2010. I I don't know. Again, we give him credit for a lot of things, but we do not give him credit, uh, but we do not bash him for not winning in the playoffs. He should be, again, he's rated the guy that should be in the Super Bowl again this year. If we don't, we give him an excuse. Oh, he had a calf injury. Oh, his line didn't protect him. Now, when I say the line doesn't protect him, follow me. 
I want to say last season or the season before, it was Aaron Rodgers' line. His line, his line, his line, his line, his line. Get later in the season, they get on the run, they go on the tear, they get into the playoffs, it's all Aaron Rodgers. All Aaron Rodgers. Same line, nothing changed, no big trade, no big sign. It's the same line that he was playing with when they were saying it's his line, it's his line, it's his line. I don't get it. Some say he don't got receivers. I know other quarterbacks who didn't have top, top, top notch receivers and still got it done. This is supposed to be one of the most overall talented quarterbacks ever. Some put him in the class that he can end up being the best quarterback ever. But he don't got to get the rings. I don't I don't know how. I don't I don't I don't get it. So let's go into let's go into his 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 games, the games he's played, who he's lost to. He let's go into his playoff record. We're gonna skip all the other stuff. We're gonna go straight into the playoff record, okay? We have a two thousand and Nine, 2007 was his first playoff appearance. He wasn't there. The 2007 season, he didn't play. That still was Brett Favre. 2009, we have him 45-51, lost to Arizona. I want to say that was that Kurt Warner um, Arizona team. They was just out there scoring. He played a hell of a game. Four touchdowns, one interception, 423 yards. 121 passer rating. Solid game overall. That's just a shootout. First time in the playoffs. You give him that. Okay. You give him that loss. Fair. He comes back the next year. He beats Philadelphia. He beats Atlanta. He beats Chicago. He beats Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a great game. He pretty much played awesome throughout that playoff series. Minus the NFC Championship game against Chicago. Where he got 21 points. Zero touchdowns. Two interceptions. Outside of that, he's had three or, t- three or more touchdowns throughout that entire playoff series. Cool. Now, we go into the 2011 season. He loses to the New York Giants. 37-20. Two touchdowns, one interception. Okay. We go into the next year. We go into the 2012 year. He beats, I want to say his name is Joe Webb of the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota was on a tier. They was coming in. They beat the Green Bay Packers to get into the playoffs. And quarterback, I want to say Ponder. Correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I want to say Ponder, I believe. Gets hurt, he can't play, and then the other quarterback gets hurt or something like that. But basically, he was playing a nobody. No stiff competition. He beats him 24-10, turns around and loses to San Francisco. Turns around and loses to San Francisco the next game. Cool. No problem. 2013, he's in. He loses to San Francisco again. Cool. We go the next year, 2014, he beats. Barely beats Dallas by five points, but he he played awesome. And then we get to the Green Bay-Seattle game where he was up, where he was up and leading late in the game, had the game wrapped up. Seattle couldn't score, so you can't complain about his defense because Seattle, it was was a tight fight. And then he goes one touchdown, two interceptions, 178 yards. Against Seattle in a game that he was winning. Now, everybody's going to say, do you remember that defense? Seattle was this. Seattle was that. You're Aaron Rodgers. You're supposed to beat top-notch defenses. If I name other quarterbacks of his of his caliber, I can guarantee you they have wins against that same defense. Figure it out. Okay. We move on from there. We go 2015. You beat Washington. That ain't hard. You turn around and you lose to Arizona 26-20. Two touchdowns, one interception, 77 passer rating. Really? You can't beat you can't get past Arizona? Go ahead, tell me Arizona was just just a supremely touted team in 2015. Go ahead. Let's 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 act like that's a reality. Let's act like that's a reality. 
It it ain't. Last year was a solid year. You get smashed by Atlanta. If I ask you, with their main corner hurt, if I ask you right now who was the secondary for the Atlanta Falcons, none of y'all can answer me. Maybe a couple Falcon fans. But they're delusional, so they don't really count. Nobody can really name their secondary. And they they don't got a front four or five, so let's relax. Let's not act like they're they're just out of the park great. Okay? It's been since 2010, since Aaron Rodgers was in a Super Bowl. Russell Wilson has been there twice since then. Eli Manning has been there once since then. The 49ers have been there once since then. The Carolina Panthers have been there once since then. The Atlanta Falcons have been there once since then. I'm sure I'm missing somebody in there. I'm I'm almost positive I'm missing somebody in there. But the point of the matter is, none of those quarterbacks that have been there are better than Aaron Rodgers. They all face some type of deficiencies with their team. And they all figured out how to get it done. I I don't view Aaron like that. I view Aaron as, as a me person. I view Aaron as when it's a win, it's just all about him. When it's a loss, it's all about everybody else. It's all about what everybody else didn't do. Or he has some rare freak injury that is bothering his soul. Wah. Who cares? No one cares. I don't care. Most people don't care. We tired of hearing about it. We, If he's so great, get in the Super Bowl. Don't give me that, oh, it's hard. Oh, what about this? Oh, what about that? It's not easy. If Rex Ghostman has been in, in the Super Bowl, if I believe, with the Bears team. Yeah, they had a solid defense. But, again, I don't want to hear any more excuses for Aaron Rodgers. Zero. There should be no more excuses. He is the best quarterback in the NFC to most of the world. He should get in. Cam Newton didn't have the, the greatest offensive pieces when he made it to the Super Bowl. This is a fact. This, this is a fact. We can we can do the numbers. As, uh, Russell. Wilson didn't have the greatest offensive number, offensive weapons when he went to the Super Bowl. Sometimes you got to make people better than what they are. Aaron Rodgers, this is about that time to make people better than what they are. I, no more excuses. Brady does it. Breeze does it. Um, Let me get another guy. Can't really think of anybody else who really does it that just makes people just that much better. But you guys get my point. At this point, David David Carr might get to a Super Bowl and win one before then, before Aaron Rodgers. How about that? How about that? Right now, a lot of people have Patriots Green Bay or Oakland Green Bay. If it goes Oakland Green Bay, I'll take David Carr. Against Aaron Rodgers. Right now. I'll take Brady against Rodgers. Hell, we go NFC. I'll take Matt Ryan against Aaron Rodgers again. I'll take... Hmm. Who else would I take? Of course I'll take Eli. I'm always going to take Eli. Eli Manning has more, more wins at Lambeau City than Aaron Rodgers. You guys remember that. Let that let that sink in for you guys. Aaron Rodgers. Eli Manning. Eli Manning has more playoff wins at Lambeau Field than Aaron Rodgers. How about that? I don't know what I don't know what you guys see, but I see somebody who's getting away with murder. Just because he looked good throwing it and it looked cute and it go far and all of that, got to step it up. We need we need success here. I don't care about MVPs. I don't care about none of that. I don't care about stats and none of. I don't care about none of that. 
He's a two-time All-Pro, six-time Pro Butler, two-time MVP, one-time Super Bowl champion. I don't know. He leaves rooms to be caught. He leaves room to be caught in yardage and touchdowns and 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 Super Bowl wins. I I just feel like for him to be the best ever, like like Brady sets a high standard. You're gonna have to do a lot. A lot in your career, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be like impeccable to catch up to Brady. I don't view it as that hard to catch up to Aaron Rodgers. Not at all. I think Russell Wilson still has a chance to catch Aaron Rodgers. I'm a, I'm be honest with y'all. I think they do the same kind of things, and I think he has a chance to catch Aaron Rodgers and, and surpass him. Brady, another you know, whole another thing. But I don't know. I just don't view Aaron Rodgers like you guys. That was part of the discussion I had this week as well, and I don't view him like that. Aaron Rodgers, I take Breeze over Rodgers. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Be honest with y'all. I take Breeze over Rodgers. Sorry. I I like Breeze over Rodgers. I like Brady over Rodgers. Brady about three. Three in the league right now. Brady got to get a Super Bowl. So this is a message for Aaron Charles Rodgers. It is Super Bowl or bust for you. Nothing else matters. We want we're gonna hold you to the same greatness standards that people hold people like LeBron and and other great sports figures and the Brady's and the, you gotta get one you gotta get another ring. As long as Eli Manning got more rings than you, I don't I don't view you like that. Sorry. I don't view you like that. Right now, why is why are you better than Breeze? Someone explain to me why are you better than Breeze. Breeze got one ring, too. Breeze got one ring. Breeze throws uh, for a ton of yards every year. He got some Pro Bowl. He got some Pro Bowl runs. He got some um, all pro runs. He he has great numbers. He has about as I think he has more touchdowns than you, if not about the same amount. Why isn't Brady the number two? I mean, why isn't Breeze, Breeze the number two? Why is it you and not Breeze? Somebody explain that to me. All he doesn't have is an MVP, which is crazy. But he, you know, he's a 10-time Pro Bowler, one-time All-Pro, one-time Super Bowl champion. Why isn't he better? I don't know. Y'all tell me. Y'all figure it out. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. Again, another Chappelle show. We'll be right back. Self a new chain now. Just yesterday I was another broke nigga till I got the call from my bro. Like we got work, nigga. And got the call late night, but Lord knows we was out there all night trying to get that money right. And goddamn, a couple beers still good in my hand. And that's been that motherfucker like a silly fish. And Lord knows if a nigga steps short with the bench, it's finna go down. Like some quick said it's the same motherfucker, ain't nothing changed. You know it. All right, welcome back to another Chappelle show. Now we're going to touch in on the New York Giants, <clears throat> which is my team. And we kicked the season off Sunday, 530, 5.30 on the West Coast for me, against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, yesterday the news came out that Ezekiel Elliott's six-game suspension will uphold. But, but somehow, some way, it will not uphold until he plays us. They're gonna allow him to play the first game, which is which is retarded, which is virtually retarded. It's like getting suspended in school for a fight, and then like, no, we're not gonna suspend you today, though. We're gonna let you play in a high school game, and then you're suspended. I don't get it. But 
Who cares? I'm actually okay with it. I still say ha 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 ha. <laughs> you still got suspended. You still gonna miss a bunch of games. You're still gonna hurt the team. But I like it like this. I like it like this. I like it that we get to play you got play you first and then you have to deal with your suspension. I love it actually. But this message isn't for you, this this message for the New York Giants. You you guys better in no way, shape, form better not allow Ezekiel Elliott to come out here and run amok on the defense and get a win before his suspension. This is this is what we are supposed to do is like this is the beating before your parent tells you and you're on punishment. And don't come out that room until I say so. This is what I should see on Sunday. So I don't care what y'all gotta do or how y'all do it. All I know is that the Dallas Cowboys should not win. But let's go down the schedule, y'all. Let's go down the schedule. Let's let's discuss certain things, certain topics. Defense Welcome back, baby. Welcome back. I believe his name is Davin Thompson. Uh, you added on the line. Let's go, baby. It's time to rock and roll. We we ready for sacks and big runs to be stopped, brother. We looking forward to you. Landon Collins, defensive player of the year. I'm rooting for you. I'm behind you. I actually getting ready to order me a Landon Collins jersey. Eli Apple this year, too. Bigger, stronger, faster. Right back at him. Cromarty was good. Jack Rabbit, what's up? This defense, let's wake up. Vernon, what up? JPP, know what time it is. We right back at him. Try to stay healthy, bro. Not that you're not being healthy on purpose, but come on. Please, Jesus Christ. Offense, B Marsh. Welcome. 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 We need you to make big time catches, red zone catches. Uh, Paul Perkins, it's, that, it's time to show what you got, brother. Not not too far, not too sure of your background, but it's time to show what you got. Time to make moves out here. Gellum uh, from uh, Clemson, see what you got. Make some plays. Shepard, what's up, man? You've been on vacay. You've been working out. You've been with your girl all all, year, all summer and all that all off season. All right, it's time to get down to business now. Yeah, too. Time to take it up another level. I had you rookie of the year last year. Kind of faulted with the offense, but hey, right back at him. Odell Beckham, catch the football. One hand, two hand, two toes, a couple. I don't care. Catch the football. You looking for some big money, brother? You looking for some big, big, big money? You want? You want to be recognized as best wide receiver? You want this? You want? be the highest paid player, those people catch footballs. They catch the ones that matter. They catch the ones that get you through the playoffs. They catch the ones that get you Super Bowl wins. Until then, I do not care about nothing. You deserve to be paid. But to be paid, to be the highest paid, absolutely not. You get a Super Bowl, you get the whole check. But until then, no. I do not care. I don't care how many catches you make, on how many targets, and how many touchdowns. If it ain't happening in the playoffs, don't none of it matter. You could do all that stat boosting for the check, but we know what's up. Let's look at your counterparts from their last playoffs. First round, Antonio Brown didn't get a lot of targets, but he got two touchdowns on his minimum targets. Julio Jones dragged his team into the Super Bowl, almost dragged him to a Super Bowl win. They were being stupid. You, you dropped like your first three passes, and you lost. Nobody cares anymore. We don't care about your answers, your dancing, your shampoo commercials, them LT earrings you wearing, none of it. No one cares. You know what LT got? Wins, big wins, playoffs. He brought Super Bowls. When you get there, then you can feel like you're him. Then you can feel like you're your reincarnation or or whatever. Anyway, let's go down the schedule. Dallas Cowboys, I got to win. Detroit Lions, I definitely got to win there. On a Monday night, too? take care of them boys. They ain't that good over there in Detroit. Philadelphia Eagles. 
Hmm. I'll take a win there, too. It's going to be tough, though. They got some bodies out there. They got some big boys out there. They got some bodies. It's going to be tough. Carson Wentz going to come to play. Last time he came, he came out. He was, you know, he was, he was a youngin. He threw some picks. But uh, I give you the win. Actually, let's see. I got you beating Dallas, beating Detroit, beating Eagles. Tampa Bay going to be a tough one. Jameis going to move around. They got some bodies, but I take the Tampa Bay one, so that's 4-0 so far. Definitely got us beating the Chargers. They ain't shit. That's five. I got us knocking down. Denver going to be a tough one, and it's at Denver. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about the Denver quarterback situation. That scares me. Denver quarterback situation scared me. Defensively, I think Denver wins. Actually, I'll give Denver the win over there. Probably when I give Denver the win, we go to Seattle. Seattle come to us, actually. Um, oh. <laughs> Old teammates, B. Marsh. Richardson, they get to go back at it. Back and forth now instead of in the media, they get to do it on the field. I like that. I like that. B. Marsh, that's a game you're going to have to show up. They're going to figure out where they put Richard Sherman. You're going to put him on B. Marsh, you're going to put him on Odell. I like that. I like that matchup. Give me that one. I'll take uh, New York Giants over Seattle. I definitely got us beating the Rams. We're going to beat the shit out of the 49ers. Uh, I'll go with the loss to Kansas City. Um, Thanksgiving Day, they got us in Washington. Come on, man. It's Turkey Day. We got to eat. We got to eat. We go ahead. We smash them. Get it over. Oh, it's a late game. Get y'all some food early in, man. Rest. The big game, Oakland. Oh, yeah, I like that. I'll be there. I'll be at the Oakland game. Um, Oakland game. Mm-hmm. I'll take us over Oakland. I'll take the second the second time we catch Dallas as a loss. Um, Philadelphia, the second time we catch them, I'll take that as a loss. Um, December 24th. We get the Arizona Cardinals. At Arizona, I will take... Hmm. December 24th, Arizona should be um, in a dogfight. Let's say... I'll take us... I'll take the loss to Arizona... No, I take the win in Arizona, lost to Washington in the last game. I think we'll lose to everybody on the second go round. Um, I think we'll lose to everybody on the second go round. So that's what one, two, three, four. And what I got, I said five losses, four or five losses. That'll work. Four or five losses sound about right. Four or five losses sound about right. We got to get the big ones. Offense, get it together. Figure it out. I'm um, reading reports today. Odell Beckham doesn't practice. High ankle. Get it together, homeboy. We don't care. We don't care. Ice it up. You should just have a round the clock ice on your foot. We don't care about nothing. We're not trying to hit nothing. You ain't trying to hear nothing. Um, Ben McAdoo quips at the Cowboys secondary looks different at 27. It. He says, if you know who's playing corner for them, you can let me know. I agree. Nobody knows who's playing corner for them. Probably nobody knows who's playing safety for them. That don't mean they, they can't be good, but nobody knows. We should dominate them. Actually, we should dominate them so much that unless they make a trade, we should beat them twice this year. I don't know how dare I give them a win this year. I'm sorry. That was blasphemous. New York Giants fan, please forgive me. That was blasphemous. No way. No how. Not giving Dallas is no wins. They don't got no secondary. They barely got a defensive line. I ain't trying to hear about them. I, I, ain't, trying to, I, ain't, I ain't trying to hear about them at all. Uh... It's time to rock and roll, y'all. It's NFL season. Are y'all excited? I am. Let's clap. It's time. It's time. All of the talking, all of the back and forth. Who cares? 
We get Ezekiel Elliott, so they got no excuse of why they didn't win. Let's make this three times in a row. 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 Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's close the gap on these boys. We get the early win. They're going to lose Zeke for a couple games. Let's go ahead and take this division. Henry Ellison has been named a starting tight end. Boy, you better do something. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. Y'all better do something, man. Because I, I, I don't see it. Other than that, I got us at a... Uh, I got us winning the division. Top four in the NFL. Win the division. How far can we go? Uh, give me NFC Championship game. Should be Super Bowl. I go NFC Championship game and we'll talk after. Should be Super Bowl. Only teams that should be in our way. Atlanta. Mm, Seattle. And... Atlanta, Seattle, and the Cowboys not really in my way. You can take care of them. I give you I give you Seattle. I give you Atlanta. I don't really care for Green Bay, though they did beat us last year. Still don't care for them. Aaron Rodgers gonna have to prove me wrong. But what do I know? Either way, y'all let me know what y'all think. Think it's a little far fetched for the New York Giants. This is another Chappelle show. We'll be right back. Self a new chain now. Just yesterday I was another broke nigga till I got the call from my bro. Like we got work, nigga. Jeez. And got the call late night, but Lord knows we was out there all night trying to get that money right. Jeez. And goddamn, a couple beers feel good in my hand. And I spend that motherfucker like a silly fan okay. shit. And Lord knows if a nigga steps short with the bench, it's finna go down like some quicks at the same motherfucker. All right, y'all, we're in the third segment. This is another Chappelle show, and this is where um, I think the most controversy is going to come from today. Um, so as I was saying earlier in a conversation, Thursday I was in, in the neighborhood and having a conversation with people, and we got to discuss some top five shooting guards ever. Um, everybody had their opinion. Probably one, two, or three was the same, except for mine, of course. I'm always the, the rebel. And... Well, first, I'm going to give you my top five shooting guards ever. And then I'll explain. First, we have Michael Jordan, of course. That's not even to be discussed. Second, I have Allen Iverson, the answer. Third, Kobe Bryant. Fourth, Dwayne Wade. Fifth, Ray Allen. Now, initially, of course, everybody went crazy. How dare you put it? Kobe Bryant over um, um, Allen Iverson over Kobe Bryant. Now, I hear some people, and I get it. That's your opinion. You might feel like Kobe Bryant is better. I don't, personally. My number two shooting guard ever is Allen Iverson. Now, you had some people arguing that. You had some people arguing about Ray Allen being fifth, and there was other people who could be considered in the fifth spot, Clyde Drexler, or most people said Clyde, or somebody tried to throw in Jerry West in there, and um, who, what is another name that came up? T-Mac came up. Um, a couple other people came up. I'm sorry. Jesus Shuttlesworth goes five for me. But let's get more into the Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant thing, right? First and foremost, I don't view Kobe Bryant as a cultural icon. Allen Iverson was a cultural icon. 
Allen Iverson broke down a lot of barriers. Kobe Bryant didn't break down a lot of barriers. Uh, Iverson did. Allen Iverson did more with less. We seen Kobe with more and less, and I'll get more in depth into this. But let's just start off on the mission, on the initial stats, because a lot of people go, "What? You crazy? He couldn't." Okay. Kobe Bryant for a career average. Hold on. He averaged 25 points. I'm going to go through all of this. He averaged 25 points, two and a half personal fouls, three turnovers, 0.5 blocks, 1.4 steals, 4.7 assists, 5.2 uh, uh, rebounds. He did that while shooting 83% from the free throw line, 48% from, 48% from the field, and 32% from three over a career. Allen Iverson averaged 26.7. So let's round it off to, what, 27? 26.7 points per game, 1.9 personal fouls, 3.5 turnovers, 0.2 blocks, 2.2 steals, 6.2 assists for all you guys who said all he was doing was shooting, 3.7 rebounds, he was a 78% free throw shooter, 45% from the field, and uh, 31% from three. So, he got average more points. He averaged more assists. He averaged more steals. Um, they were percentage points off in, in blocks. He averaged less personal fouls. They are about equal in turnovers. So, he beats them statistically outside of the percentages. He Beats him. Kobe gets more rebounds. Kobe six six. AI barely six foot. If that's what you want to give him, I say he's six foot. A lot of people say no. He was under six foot. Whatever. So, for somebody that said that I always Chuck and didn't have a great system and didn't have a Shaquille O'Neal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He averaged more assists. He averaged more points. He averaged more steals. Now, everybody goes, "What? Kobe Bryant is the second thing to the second closest thing you've ever seen to Michael Jordan." This is a fact. The problem with it is he's only that offensively. He's not that defensively. Now, people going to go, what? You know how many defensive teams he's made? I go, okay, where's his resume as far as a defensive player? Michael Jordan was a defensive player. A lot of people like to just give it to to um, Scottie Pippen. But Michael Jordan was a defensive player. He was a hell of a defensive player. Let's not act like his resume does not include defensive awards. Don't give me the whole, oh, Kobe wasn't liked by the media. The same people who vote for MVP vote for them all defensive teams he made. He made 12 of them, by the way. He made 12 of them. Mike only made nine. But if we go down the resume, Mike was a five-time MVP, a three-time All-Star MVP, he was nine-time all-defensive teams. He was defensive player of the year. Okay? He was rookie of the year. No, nope, that doesn't include defense. He was a defensive player of the year. On top of that, he led the league in steals twice. Kobe's never led the league in steals. Kobe's never been a defensive player of the year. He is on defensive teams. But he's never, he's never won defensive player of the year. He never led the league in steals. Cool. Who you seen Kobe Bryant lock up that was anybody of significance? We seen him get get busy on Chauncey when they was uh in uh, uh man uh, against Denver. That was that. That was it. That was as close as as significant you could get. And their finals alone, Kobe. I mean, in their finals alone matchup, their lone finals matchup, AI versus Kobe. Kobe. I mean, AI averaged thirty plus. I don't think he had a game under thirty points. So he clearly wasn't stopping AI in, in, in his head to head. They both got one MVP. AI led the league in steals twice. Everybody goes, Stills, yeah, you just playing the passing lane. You just doing this. You just doing that. So, that's not his problem. That That is not Allen Iverson's problem that he can play the passing lane well. Turnover, if you turn the ball over, it's a, it, 
it's still a turnover, no matter how you did it. You stripped there, you paid the pass lane, you caught it, you caused the turnover. You you did what you were supposed to do. Am I wrong? Somebody tell me I'm wrong. Now, let's go into the cultural icon part of it. Allen Iverson's the first time with a lifetime sneaker deal. Y'all wasn't rocking Kobe's like that when they was the moon boots and Adidas. A few people had them, but they wasn't selling out of stores like that. He had the early Nike run with the Harachi situation. He had the case in Denver. He fell apart. We didn't start wearing Kobe's again until about two, three years later. Give me a Kobe signature move. They're all Michael Jordan's move. He chews gums like this man. He wasn't even his own man. He doesn't even have his own identity in the NBA. You call him Black Mamba, but everything you've seen of him is Michael Jordan. I'm sorry. There's something to that. I'm sorry. A lot of people don't want to, to, to admit that, but there's something to that. Like, he's a replica. Yes, he mimicked him well. So? He mimicked somebody. He wasn't even his own person. Kobe Bryant was not... Kobe Bryant was great. One of the greatest ever. Take nothing away from him. They came out the same time. Only thing Kobe Bryant had over Allen Iverson is rings. Or has. Rings. He also had amazing talent to play with from the day he walked into the NBA. Allen Iverson was not awarded the same thing. I'm sorry. He wasn't awarded the same thing. We all know that. We seen Allen Iverson by we seen Allen Iverson come out by himself. We seen him come out by himself. We seen the results of what happened when he was by himself. We seen the results of Kobe Bryant. It was a it was a missed playoff, first round out, first round out after being up, what is it, 2-3-1? Being up 3-1, losing in game seven, not wanting to shoot the shot, and then screaming and begging for help, or he would leave the Los Angeles Lakers. AI's never had that moment. Kobe Bryant was spoiled. He walked into the league with Shaquille O'Neal. Two years removed from Dale Harris, he gets Phil Jackson. They bring a bunch of veterans around him, surround him with a bunch of veteran talent. He goes into four straight finals. He wins three. He loses the fourth. He beats with Shaq. He gets by himself. It's missed playoff. First round out. First round out. I need help. I want to leave. If I don't get help, you get Paul Gasol. Phil Jackson comes back. Derek Fisher comes back. They, they shore up the veterans around you. And he's back to his winning ways. By yourself, he wasn't that amazing. This is a this is a fact. Uh, that's a pure example for you right there. You go deep into the stats. I, I was wrong. Allen Iverson is a three-time steals leader. Kobe Bryant has never led the league in steals. Allen Iverson is a four-time scoring champ. Kobe Bryant was two. He played seven more years than Allen Iverson. He shot, we know he shot tons of more shots. They had to head, yeah, Allen Iverson was rookie of the year. Kobe Bryant wasn't. Kobe Bryant does have nine all-defensive teams. No, all-defensive first teams. Allen Iverson has zero. Kobe Bryant has 12 all-defensive team total. Again, I'm going to go over these stats again so that you guys can hear me and understand what I'm saying to you guys. 25 points a game for a career, 26-7 for a career. 5.2 5.2 rebounds, 3.7. Assists, 4.7 Kobe Bryant, 6.2 Allen Iverson. Steals, 1.4 Kobe Bryant, 2.2 Allen Iverson. Um, Kobe Bryant, 0.5 blocks. Allen Iverson, 0.2. Kobe Bryant got seven more years in the league than Allen Iverson. He has... A little under 10,000 more points. They are in total assists. He has seven more years than Allen Iverson. He has about... He's about 700 assists higher than Allen Iverson. Over seven years. He only has 700 more. Allen Iverson has more steals... Over seven years, Allen Iverson left the league with more steals than Kobe Bryant had. 
seven extra years, he left the league with more steals than that boy. Yes, serious. Kobe Bryant played 1,346 game. Allen Iverson played, Allen Iverson played 914. They're about 10%, 10% different in field goal percentages all the way across the board. Um, when they were going head-to-head in their best season in 2006, this is, I believe this is Allen Iverson heading towards um, Denver. In 2006, it was 33 points a game to Kobe Bryant's 35 points a game. Kobe Bryant's highest assist total was 2014. We know he wasn't doing nothing really in 2014. And that was 6.3 then. Allen Iverson was at 7.9 in 2005. His highest steals, Kobe Bryant's highest steal season ever, was 2.2. AI was at 2.8. Not much of a difference. You round that off to three. His is down to two. I'm just, I'm just pointing out the facts here, people. Playoff wise, yeah, yeah, tripping. Playoff wise, AI averaged twenty nine point seven. Kobe averaged twenty five point six. Allen averaged six assists. Kobe averaged four. Three point eight in rebounds for Allen. Five point one for Kobe Bryant. Two point one steals. One point four for Kobe Bryant. I'm just pointing out the facts here that he played longer. Played more, and the numbers shake out. Kobe Bryant at his best in the playoffs in 2007, he averaged 32.8 points. Allen Iverson averaged 32.901. That was a finals run. I want to say that 32.8 in the playoff for Kobe was the. Uh, uh, the up 3-1 and lose in the first round. 32.9 took Kobe Bryant. I mean, it took Allen Iverson to the NBA Finals. Uh, most assists per game. 2005. For Allen Iverson, he averaged 10 in the playoffs in 05. Kobe Bryant averaged 6.1 in 01. Steals per game. Allen Iverson is at 2.6 in 2002. That's the playoff. He averaged the most. Kobe Bryant averaged his most in 2004, 1.9. Just pointing it out, y'all. My greatest ever was an it was an icon. He brought rap to the NBA. He made tattoos cool. He made it okay to be who you want. He gave inspiration to them little boys and girls in the hood to be great. Kobe Bryant didn't do that. Kobe Bryant's a great player. He worked his behind off to be where he was and where he's at, but he mimicked another man. He chewed gum like another man. I'm sorry. I cannot. I, I just cannot allow that. That's that's crazy. Like, it's one thing to want to be like somebody. It's a whole other thing to chew gum, walk, talk, and act. There's not even an M or a J in Kobe Bryant's name. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, I get it. He was great, but come on. You, you, don't, you don't got one thing you want to do on your own? They banned a crossover from AI. I don't I don't know, man. Kobe great. Don't get me wrong. I keep saying this again. Kobe is great. But he ain't AI. Second greatest shooting guard ever is Allen the answer Iverson. Cultural icon. Now I wish he would have got his head on straight at at an early enough time so that he can last longer. Take care of his body better. But pound for pound, you giving me prime? Kobe AI, I'll take AI in my sleep. I'ma get more out of him. I could get more with less. I've seen Kobe Bryant with less. Smoosh Parker and all of them couldn't survive. Most of y'all cannot name the, the 2001 Philadelphia 76ers team. And they still got one win. He was torching the Los Angeles Lakers. They just couldn't stop Shaq. It's different when you come in this league and you got Shaquille O'Neal. And I come in this leg and who who knows who I got over here. No disrespect to Dikembe. He was great defensively. He couldn't give me 30 a night, though. Tyrone Hill. Shout out Aaron McKee. But Eric Snow, Willie Green, George Lynch, Matt Geiger. Y'all serious? Don't get me wrong. I don't blame this all on 
on on the players though. I blame this on some of the organizations like like Billy King or the other guy that was over there, Lynch. I want to say his name is Larry Brown too. Some somebody in so for some odd reason somebody told y'all it was smart to take Larry Hughes over Paul Pierce at that time or even Dirk Nowinski. That was stupid, all because of a promise you made him. Boo hoo. But whatever. Again, I know a lot of y'all gonna y'all gonna be cursing me out on every chance y'all get. I'll go Allen Iverson over Kobe Bryant, pound for pound. You do the numbers. You tell me why not. You tell me why I'm wrong. You just started wearing Kobe Bryant's. Really? You just started wearing. Let's not act like he he's always been this. He got some great commercials, but it's still not even better than the commercial that that AI had with the ball dribbling and Jada Kid. Like AI was a whole different being. He was the closest thing to Tupac in basketball you've ever seen. Kobe Bryant was a replica of an entirely, a man he he just never met anything. I don't I don't get it. It's cool it's cool that he's replicated that, but he just not he just not that. That concludes in this episode of another Chappelle show, y'all. Y'all click on the link, y'all follow, add on, comment, view. Let me know what y'all think though. See y'all later.